You've heard the term outsourcing, but have you heard of crowdsourcing? It's an idea that's been around, but now that it can intersect with the internet, crowdsourcing is becoming increasingly powerful. Here to explain just what it is and how it works is Chris Hammond of Northwestern University. Chris, welcome back. Good to see you as oh, always. Thank you. Thank you to right. see you. Give us a primer. What is crowdsourcing? Well, it's, it's, it's interesting, and that is, like many great ideas, it's unbelievably simple. It's that when I have something I want done and I can't do it, and no one in my company can do it, what I'm going to do is I'm going to open the doors. And I'm going to say, is there anyone out there who can do this? And with the web now, I can actually do that by publishing it and wait to see who can come in, who can suggest things, and pick and choose amongst the solutions. Before we get to some examples, uh, quickly, how is it different from, quote, outsourcing? Well, that's usually your, I mean, outsourcing uh, nowadays, you think of it as <clears throat> going to India, going to Pakistan, actually taking a, a job and having another company that's out of the country uh, just deal with the problem. This is a much more, uh, a much more, dare I say, an organic notion uh, that you're, it's more you're publishing a problem. You're opening the problem to the world. And it could be that somebody in Pakistan or India has a solution for you, but it could be that the guy down the hallway, uh, you know, in the company next door has a solution as well. Because in outsourcing, you give it to someone. That's right. In crowdsourcing, you give it to the crowd. <laughs> okay. Well, let's see some examples. One, one uh, that's been around for a while is something called Mechanical Turk. Mechan what is Mechanical Turk? Uh, the Mechanical Turk is uh, a service that Amazon has. And it was really focused on the notion that there are going to be problems that, you're gonna, that you want solved that, are, uh, that can be pulled pulled apart into tiny little pieces. So if I have 100,000 photographs and I want them labeled as to is there a person in here, is there a car in here, is there a building in here, I can publish those on the web and say, I'll give a nickel a piece for anyone who says there's a car, there's a person, there's a dog, there's a cat. And hundreds of people, thousands of people can come in and deal with that problem. Uh, and I'll get it solved quickly. It won't cost me all that much. It'll still cost me. Uh, but, uh, and all the people who are involved in it actually get to do a piece of it. They don't have to do the whole job at once. So if I'm interested in getting a piece of it, all I do is like, I go online and see what the job is, and it could involve, okay, I have to identify this picture and identify what's in the picture. Uh, just as so somebody has a catalog, I can do as many pictures as I want, and I'll get paid a little bit something for it. Absolutely. You can, you can, come, you can come, do the job, as much of the job as you want, and go away. Someone else will do the rest of it. Uh, Another one is called CrowdSpring. What is CrowdSpring? CrowdSpring is, uh, CrowdSpring is a much more creative um, uh, notion. And that is, uh, what CrowdSpring does is that if I want a logo made, uh, if I want a website designed, I go to CrowdSpring, I describe what I want, I say, I'll, spe I'll, I'll, I'll spend $1,000 for a logo. And what happens is designers and artists and people in the graphics industry, they come to me. They come, they, they make their suggestions, and I, again, I can pick and choose amongst those. Now, CrowdSpring is really very much more focused on uh, sort of non-decomposable tasks and really very focused on the creative community. Um, and I think that's the important word for CrowdSpring is community. It's CrowdSpring is one of the best things that you can get in, uh, in crowdsourcing, and that is it helps to create a community of like-minded people, of designers who actually now have sort of a place to go uh, to see problems, to make suggestions, to see each other's work to a great extent. Um, and that's a really exciting notion where it's, it's not just I do the job and I go away or I work in an office and I go away. It's that I'm working with a larger community all the time. But this is a uh, CrowdSpring, uh, excuse me, CrowdSpring is project based. That is to say it's an entire project as opposed to just one little piece of it. So everything is sort of submitted on spec, right? Yes, and there's a, there is some controversy uh, and some argument about you know, what there's, we're exploiting that uh, CrowdSpring or other companies are exploiting designers and they're making them do all this work and like 20 people, 30 people, 100 people will give me a logo and I'm only gonna pay one of them. Uh, and uh, you know, that, that's, a, that's an issue that has to be dealt with. I think in this economy, the notion that you're opening the door to Anyone can come to you, and you're not, you, don't have to hire, you don't have to hire an entire team, but any individual can come to you, and their work will speak for themselves. It's actually an exciting set of opportunities that, that they're creating. And there's a local company, a local website, called Threadless. Tell us what Threadless is about. And Threadless, I would say, is, 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 uh, is perfect crowdsourcing. And that is Threadless, uh, they make t-shirts. And uh, they don't have t-shirt designers. Uh, they don't even have people who decide uh, what designs are best or worst. What they do is they have an ongoing competition. Uh, and every single week, hundreds of people submit t-shirt designs, and their entire community, which is 
hundreds of thousands of people vote on which designs are better or worse. The best designs, that designer gets paid, that t-shirt gets made, and Threadless already knows it's the best because its community has already voted on it. And so what you have isn't just customers anymore. You have people who, are, who love, the, who love t-shirts, who love the design process, who love what's going on, who want to be the hippest, and they're all working together, all, all, all as part of one community. And that's a, it's a, it's a sort of a, a gorgeous, brilliant notion uh, in terms of uh, what you can do to get a job done in a creative realm. It's kind of one-stop shopping because not only do you have the crowd designing it, but you have the crowd voting on the design and then the crowd buys it. Then the crowd buys it, that's <laughs> right. right. And the, what's, uh, the only missing component is there is no p crowd component that's manufacturing it. Uh, and because it's a physical, there's a physical thing there, you actually have to have a manufacturing plant at some point. And, if that, uh, and then one after those t-shirts are manufactured, then it's shipped to the crowd, who, oh, absolutely. members of the crowd who decide to buy it. Absolutely. Um, Although even part of the community is even discussing shipping process and uh, 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 packaging materials. Uh, so that's all part of it. Uh, it's really the notion of the, a company that is built around community where the community controls a tremendous amount of the decision making that goes on within the company itself. Uh, well, some of the downsides of crowdsourcing, what are they? Um, I, I think it's, it's really um, uh, intellectual property uh, when it comes to, uh, uh, when it comes to uh, design. Um, and I think uh, both uh, Threadless and uh, uh, Crowdspring have a real focus on making sure that they explain they don't own anything. They're not going to own what you, uh, what you submit. Um, if they buy it, you know, or a client buys it, they own it. Um, uh, and this notion of everyone working on spec all the time. Um, in other words, a lot of people will put in work but, but don't get no rewards. But don't get paid for it. Uh, the other issue is uh, that's more on the Mechanical Turk side is quality that if I have 100,000 photos and I want them all labeled and somebody's going around labeling them, I don't necessarily have a guarantee that they're doing a good job. Um, and there are ways to manage that. That is, you make sure that there's no one individual who's ever doing everything. Um, uh, in fact, there's a, a game called ESP, which is crowdsourcing for labeling, which, re which demands that you're right. And it's a, an, an interesting model. Um, uh, but the, it's that whole thing of quality control. If I'm not hiring you, how do I know you're any good at what you're doing? Um, and, uh, but there it's like, okay, there's a registration process. We're going to actually sort of track you over time. We'll see if you're doing good work. And Mechanical Turk, that's part of what their business model is, is taking care of business uh, in, terms of, uh, in terms of people doing a good job. Chris Hammond, thank you very much. Oh, absolutely. It was, it was lovely. <laughs>